Hello, my name is Mike Gaiman, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, I had finally put my first object into a stable orbit about Kerbin, the Spacely One, and that's to fulfill a contract here. Uh, this timer should click down in the background. There it goes. Um, just got to wait another 35 minutes or so. And then that will be done. Um, I also have a lot of other contracts. These are all part testing contracts because I really got to start improving my fund situation so I can improve or upgrade the VAB. That's really my next task. So in the building queue here, I do have my ugly test vehicle. It is 11 minutes from being done. So uh, that will be seen very, very shortly. But clearly I have another bay. I have two construction bays going. So I do want to get something in. I don't want this whole thing to be nothing but test vehicles. So what I've been thinking is I want to take that Spacely. Uh, now that I can put something into orbit, hopefully with some reliability, uh, I want to start collecting some orbital science. And the Stay Putnik probe does give you the ability to uh, do a lot of the science stuff. Here, let's get rid of some of these extra windows we don't really want. So let's bring up the old Spacely one. And we're gonna do some improvements to it. I also have, so yeah, like actually let's go with what I was talking about first. If I take this, it was set up to do the light experiment, but uh, we can, configure this to do other experiments so I was thinking like I could send it each one up um, do some experiments and uh, you know collect some science that way relatively cheap what is the cost of this oh six thousand three hundred eighty that's not that expensive but I do want to make some improvements to it there are a number of things that would make this better so what I'm gonna do we'll start off with um, taking this booster make sure I get the booster I'm gonna take it off we're gonna make some improvements to the booster ah shoot I want to get the decoupler too I'm gonna take it off I'm gonna drop it into a sub assembly I'm just gonna call it a uh, temp booster because we're gonna make some improvements to this booster and then we'll rename it and then uh, I want to make some improvements to the space late I Again, because of my non-upgraded VAB, I'm limited to 30 parts. So I want to start limiting parts on this. So the first thing is going to go is the solar panels. I really don't think this is necessary because once it's done doing its one experiment, um, then it has no more use anymore. So I'm also just put some batteries on it, enough batteries to do the one experiment it can do and then call it a day. So let's see, let's look at our experiment. So we'll configure this. Uh, there was a mite experiment, here it is. And we need to figure out how much electricity this is gonna cost here. So it needs 0 0.085 units of electricity per second down here. And it takes 12 minutes and 35 seconds in which to do the experiment. So let's get out a calculator real quick and figure out what that is going to cost us. 12 times 60 uh, plus 35 seconds, that gives us the amount of seconds, times 0 0.085 to do the experiment. That is um, 110 units of electricity uh oh that's pretty steep now okay that's a little more than i would have get okay so 110 units of electricity i wouldn't mind getting it to do it in high space as well let's let's see what we can do uh so that would be 220 plus cost of running the antenna and stuff which honestly is probably pretty trivial in comparison i'm gonna go with three batteries. Oh, there's already one on here. So let's just put that guy on three times symmetry. Boop, boop. There we go. Um, actually, I should be careful. Does it tell me? Maybe the... The amount of data is 3.26 megabytes. I'm not sure if I'm going to get myself into trouble with this or not. This can transmit. There we go. But this is MITS. Is a MIT and a megabyte? 
Ah, oh, I hate when the units are different. It's a mit and a megabyte the same. Because this in transmits 0 0.0015 mits per second, and while it's doing it, it uses 0.7 electric charge per minute. Oh, you know what? I oh, forget it. Let's go with three batteries, see what happens. Oh, I hate when there's not the same units of... Oh, whatever. The other thing I want to change is I want to take out the Spacely. The reason why I put the Spacely on here is I had a contract to test the Spacely on the way up, which I never fulfilled anyway. Uh, it's too much of an engine for this little thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch it to the Spider engine. Now, I want to go with the Spider, not the Ant, because the Ant engine uh, does not have any gimbling ability, but the Spider engine does. In fact, that's pretty generous gimbling ability. Its vector range is 10 degrees. Um, but it is a radial engine, which clearly is going to present a small issue. Well, not really too much of an issue, because of course all we got to do is use the translation tool and slide that into the middle. Okay, how's that look? All right, bring her down a bit. This is just for looksy booksies. There we go. See that? That looks all right. Is there different skins on the ant? There is not, or the spider. All right. So that looks okay. Thrust at max thrust is still over one, so uh, that's more than enough once you're into orbital maneuvering. We're gonna call this though no longer the spacely one. We're gonna call it obviously the spider one better. Alright, so orbital selection. Kerbin, yes. Start simulation. I want to test it in orbit because uh, of the translating of that spider engine. I want to make sure I can fly this in a straight line and not fly it in circles. Life without reaction wheels. Which, quite frankly, I do enjoy. The reaction wheels in Kerbal Space Program are a little bit ridiculous. All right, so we will fire up the engine here. Should be good. And I'm just going to give a little bit of thrust. And all I want to do is see if I can control you. Let's see if we can get you on the prograde. Whoa. That is pretty sweet. Now, if I start putting up the thrust a bit, it will want to drift, which is pretty normal, but I can control it. And do full thrust. Yeah, it does have a t slight tendency to drift to the right, but nothing I can't control. So that's cool. All right. End simulation. All right, now we can bring back the booster. This is why I threw it in the subassembly to begin with, so I wouldn't lose it. I'm noticing it's sticking to the bottom of the tank rather than the engine, so hopefully that'll be okay now. Big issue is park count, still at 30, but we can do better. Because what I want to do is I do want to get, um, I do want to get, uh, let's get back here. The, uh, I, I got it, I, uh, I've been playing around with KOS some more, and I have an ascent script that I want to show you, but that requires getting in a scriptable control surface. This thing has way more delta V than it needs, so let's strip this tank away that on there that looks a little better and in fact let's uh, we can do a lot of improvements to improve the number of parts here let's stick that under there there now we got that control I don't think I need the fins now another dumb thing I did and again because I was stuck on using different engines I got the cogswell without its vector ability and then with spiders on here to help control direction that is way more engines than I need clearly if I simply took that off and put on a single spacely that will whoops there we go that will take care of that and lower the amount of parts that I have going all right uh, we're gonna replace these nose cones with parachutes so that we can recover that better so, oh I need some smart parts uh, smart part part under control a smart part to help stage these boosters a single smart part should do the trick 
And that should be set to stage when the fuel is gone. Good, good, good. So we have these two boosters going. Yep, the staging all looks good. All right, then I think I should be able to put this thing into a polar orbit with the way it's configured. So, yeah, why don't we save this? And we'll do a simulation from launch, obviously, just to see how it flies. And you'll get a first glance at my Ascend program, like I've done with my other times, though. This one, I'm just going to run it. Uh, and then when we have this vessel a little bit later in this episode, I'll go over the code for it. So you'll get a good look at it. And the changes I made in the code because I don't want to get into cost. So we don't care about any of that. We're going to open this up. We're going to open up our KOS terminal. We're going to switch to the archive volume. Oh yeah, switch to, <laughs> to. And we're going to run, it's called ascend. It takes two parameters. The first is your desired final inclination. So we're gonna go with 90. And the second parameter is your desired apoapsis in kilometers. So I'm gonna go with 80 kilometers for my desired apoapsis. And we're gonna hit run. And this should, in theory, completely fly itself, including staging those boosters. Oh wait, I forgot one smart part. And you know, I do think, it, yeah, it kind of came off the pad a little wobbly. It is correcting for itself now. That's good. Should be starting its pitching maneuver, which it is, and it's pitching towards the north, which is exactly what I want it to do. Without rolling, which is also what I want it to do. And if you look, it actually is pitching a little bit west of north. See, the heading is not 360, but 355. Now it's 356 degrees. And that's because your prograde heading was already going towards the east because of the rotation of Kerbin. And uh, there we go. We're doing well. The only thing I have to do is I have to stage this one booster. I should put a smart part on it to fix that. I'll do that in a little bit. Um, yeah, it, it, you're already got a prograde going east, so you need to pull that prograde to, or that vector towards the north, and so that's why I'm actually a little bit west of north. Okay, I just got to watch for this one staging. There we go, and now, oh, you know what? I never did adjust thrust to weight ratios. This is why we test. Okay, we're going to terminate our simulation. Ah, joy of joys. So it was back into the VAB to put those upper stage fins back on and adjust some thrust to weight ratios. And then it was time for a second try. Still drifts quite a lot, but once it picks up speed, like it does kind of wobble as it comes off the pad, but once it picks up speed, these guys have quite a lot of a... Th a th control authority once the sp as the speed starts to pick up so yeah it's it's doing fine now I think that's just the wobble I do have launch clamps uh, unlocked the problem is the part count once again but right now it seems to be doing fine it's doing a nice job of tracking the prograde vector which you always want to see you don't want to see when you're doing an ascend, ascent, this getting too far from the prograde vector. So those two will be recovered. The middle booster will not. Um, I don't, I cannot afford the radio parachutes on there. All right, so it was when we we're just about to lose that core booster. And that's when we lost control before. Now we are not losing control. I made a couple of changes, but I think keeping those fins on there is probably a good plan. All right, and this should cut out when we get to 80 kilometers on our apoapsis. Do love the rocket plumes that come with the restock mod. That looks so nice. I didn't even explain why I want the um, the polar orbit. 
The reason is, is because I want to cross radiation belts. There's a contract floating around for that, and if I go into a polar orbit, I do cross the radiation belts. I'm going to have to stage. That one I had to do manually. And is that engine on? Oh, thrust. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Did it cut? No. Uh, shoot. What ha oh, I know why that happened. Oh, that's... Okay. Um... Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, that's okay. I if 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 I'm paying more attention. Oh my gosh. Okay, cut throttle. Let this go. Uh, that happened because my. Okay, this this is terminated. <laughs> my um. The. Ugh. Come on. There we go. The um, probe core, or the computer core, was attached to that spacely stage. <laughs> so when I staged there, the computer core went along. I don't think I want to put the computer core on the payload. I don't know if I want... Well, do I want to add that mass onto that? But that's why that happened. <laughs> Life is so hard. I did decide to put the computer core onto the payload after all, which does make more sense. I should just get in the habit of doing that all the time. And with that... Alright, so it's when this one ran out of fuel and staged... Oh, I gotta stage it now. That's when we ran into problems. Hopefully now, everything should be good. Yes, because our program is still running. Unlike before, where it just killed itself <laughs> by ditching the probe core. Uh, still got over a thousand meters per second in this stage. Alright, almost at 80. There it is. 80 kilometers. That is done. And program is ended. Good, good, good. So we'll close that. Now I am on my own. Uh, what I'm interested in... Time warp up to the apoapsis is can I circularize? I don't think I can. I think I'm gonna have to abandon the polar orbit idea. That's too bad. This is despite what seems like more than adequate delta V. I think I just don't have enough thrust in the upper atmosphere for an efficient descent. But then a different problem reared its head. One I was unfortunately too quick to dismiss. Why do I have no control? Okay, now I got a different issue. Engines on. I'm throttling up. And to be honest, I think I got a glitch. No. Just back onto here. No, I do have those controls, but I've lost engine control. <sighs> why do I? Why do I not have? Said doesn't work. Why? Weird. I have full probe control, full electrical charge, but no throttle control. Now, I'll let you know right now, this is a subtle one, and it took me a while to figure out what the problem was, which included some uh, forum searching. But, I promise you, I will get back to and reveal what the issue is towards the end of this episode. I don't want to give anything else away, though. Suffice to say, for now, though, I just made the rash decision to push this into the building queue the way it was and just go for an equatorial orbit. I just abandoned the polar orbit idea. But we'll be getting back to this vessel later in this episode. Right now, well, I got an ugly test vehicle to fly. All right, so what contracts? Okay, we have a duo decoupler. We have a, another radial decoupler on the launch site. Not gonna worry about that. We're gonna try and test the spacely at a particular altitude. Drogue shoot's not going to be tested, and... Oh wait, no, the drogue shoot is going to be tested. That's right. So we got three contracts we're going to go for. Here we are. We'll keep them all. 
Uh, why has my where's my orbit curbing contract? Has that been? Oh my gosh, radial drogue, test the Yeah, that's all right. Oh, I must have completed. I just missed the notification for it. Okay, so our orbit Kerbin contract must have completed in the background. Well, me not paying attention. Okay, so we got two testing of radial decouplers. That's simply this. Boom. And both of those are now complete. They just need to be tested on the surface. Now, um, oh my gosh, it's been so long since I actually flew this thing because I did do a bit of a vacation. So it's been a few weeks, a couple of weeks since I've last played Kerbal. I uh, got to test the spacely at this altitude and at this speed, and then I got to test the drogue at a higher altitude and between those speeds. Okay, I'm gonna do a s s quick save because I know I worked this all out in simulation, but I'm not quite sure what I did. I'm gonna take the. I think I'm gonna to have to be ready to cut this chute. So I think what I'm gonna do is just fly straight up. Uh, I don't have SAS and it's only an SR. Oh no, I do have throttle. I have the, what do I have down here? I have a spacely down there, of course I do. Oh, I gotta get ready to test that spacely too. So put that over there. There we go, okay. Uh, let's punch it, he says with such confidence. So at eight kilometers, I gotta hit 230, and I gotta stage that parachute, which is ready to be staged. Okay, let's go, let's go. Oh, going not the way I want you to go. There we go. A little bit off kilter there. That's okay. Um, oh, I, this is coming back to me. What I think I did is I just throttled down once I started getting to the speed I wanted to get to. I just went straight up. This is coming back to me now. Okay, it's, it's more stable now that uh, it's got some speed. There we go. So I do not want to get much past 230 meters per second, so we're going to start the throttle down. Oh, no, a little more. Okay, I got the right out. Oh, wait, I need more speed. More speed. Okay, stage. That's good. Cut, 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 parachute. Okay, now we're going to just ride this up. And we need to get a lot of speed. This contract is done. We need to get a lot of speed coming back down. So what I'm going to be doing is I got to get up to 580 meters per second before I get to. Without oh I don't know. If, okay let's let's get falling. Okay punch the engine. Hot pitch up. And I don't want to lose too much altitude. Oh my god, this was not good. I did not do good. Bad, 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 bad. Okay, no, no, no. Good, 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 good. I need more speed though. Ah, I'm out of speed. I'm out of fuel. I'm not going to hit. Okay, so I messed up the space lee. I'll let that go. I gotta come up with a better way to test this basically. I was trying to pick up speed on my way down, but I couldn't go below four kilometers. I need to get up to 580 meters per second before I got to an altitude of four kilometers. Clearly, that did not happen. <laughs> so we're just gonna ride this to its doom. Oh well, three out of four. Not terrible. And... Got three out of four, plus we got the orbit curbin contract now, so I should be able to pick up four more contracts. Let's see what we got. This is a new uh, contract pack. Somebody suggested this to me, and uh, I just wanted to add a bit of more variety to my contracts here. And somebody suggested this giving aircraft a purpose, which I guess the name kind of speaks to for itself. It just gives you simpler. Uh, aircraft, not simpler, but just a pro more progressive aircraft contract. So now it's just build and fly your first plane. Well, clearly, 
Um, I think I got that. So what do we got to do? Our flying machine must have a volunteer. Yeah, have wings, have an air breathing engine. Uh, not have any solid rocket engines. Not have any liquid rocket engines. Not have any solid rocket fuel. Okay, that's easy. Okay, and just fly. All right, so that's obviously easy. If I fly the Juno, I'll get that one right away. That's cool. SETI contracts. Orbit and recovery. What's this now? This is new. Uh, if you want to launch a probe into an orbit around Kerbin and then recover it from the surface of Kerbin. You know what? I'm going to grab that. I am going to grab that because I can easily modify the Spacely. Yeah, I'm going to grab it anyway. It might, might not be as easy as I think it is, but that's okay. We'll worry about that later. It was then two more part contracts, which did require some further modifications to the Juno, and you'll be seeing this fly in, well, just a little bit. But first, I got 24 science, almost 24 science, but I'm really thinking, oh, that's 18 for stability. Oh, a cube. Okay. I have the cube. That's worthwhile. And then it's going to be 45s after that. But I think I will. Yeah. Let's do that. So start researching on you. I'll take four days. The cube will give me SAS capabilities on my probes. Which, let's face it, that will be useful. Uh, that will. Now, uh, in the upgrades department... To decide where to put those extra points. There were extra point. Singular. And you know what? I am going to put it in R&D. And the reason is, is because uh, the next level, this is the last of, well, I can't remember whatever it was on, tier 3, tier 4, whatever it was, the next node is significantly more science points, so it's going to take a lot to research it. So I want to kind of prep in that direction. So I'm going to actually put it towards this, which means this will be here pretty quickly. It was then a few days time warp. To Jebediah and the next flight of the Juno. Okay, here we go. And our fuel tanks are full. I didn't even check that. Yes. And this should be now empty. Monopropellant. Yes. Okay. We have a ton of ugly crap <laughs> stuck onto the top of here. We got this decoupler. We've got a parachute at the back and a parachute at the front. Now, our contracts. We have a fly our first plane contract. We'll definitely be doing that, even though this isn't our first plane, but you know where I'm coming from. We will be testing that parachute. We will be testing this parachute, and we'll be testing, oops, get over there, and the decoupler, so we'll bring this over. All right, so what order are we gonna do the parachute, or these things? So that's at an altitude of four kilometers that's at an altitude of eight kilometers and that is at an altitude of i can't get to that altitude oh okay so the radial decoupler is on here for no reason so we'll get rid of that pretty quickly i didn't pay enough attention this thing can't get to a 24 kilometer altitude well, we'll give her a go, but I think the uh, odds of that are very unlikely, but we will be getting to this altitude first. So that's the Mark 16. That's the one at the back. Yep. And I will have to get ready to cut that chute because I don't think Jebediah wants to fly with a parachute again. Did that to him. <laughs> with a rocket plane or a rocket glider. Don't need to do that. What, what was I not paying attention to altitude? Uh, okay, okay, okay. But fly the first plane should be a gimme. So let's get started here. So throttle up. SAS on. Get ourselves into the chase position. And brakes off. And let's go. Now it is a little bit heavier. I noticed it on testing. It takes a little bit to, uh, to get off the pad. <laughs> or get off the runway here. But Jed's got this. And I think a lot of that is that big decoupler. Get up. Get up. There we go. Is that big decoupler. Okay, we got to get up to an altitude of four kilometers. Let's go, Jeb. Or, sorry. Eight, yeah, four kilometers. Speed's not an issue. 90 meters per second is our speed we need to get. So that's, that's pretty easy. 
and then we'll stage that parachute, make sure it's the right one. Yes, it is. Did, did we get this? What do we got to do with this? Oh, we got to land again. Okay, that's not a problem. Well, hopefully that's not a problem. Shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> oh, wait, we have... Shipley. Yes, goo! Oh my golly golly! Uh, let's observe the goo. Okay, we are observing goo. Didn't even think about that. Let's keep track of... Data. There we go. Put that up there. Who's doing its thing? Okay. Uh, how are we doing? We're almost at four kilometers. We should be staging and cutting. Stage. Oh, it just needs to haul it. All right. Won't bother staging. We'll put you way up here. Okay. Next is to test the Mark 16 parachute at an altitude of eight kilometers. So we'll keep going up. No, who am I kidding? This thing can't get to this altitude, so why don't we just... Goodbye. <laughs> get rid of that. There's no point to that. There's no way this guy's getting to 24 kilometers. I'm not going to kid myself. Can't get to 8 kilometers, though. That's not a problem. This contract, though, is a problem. I really need to get in the habit of reading my contracts more closely. you still got eight minutes to observe, to collect its sample. This one actually collects the sample and fills the slot. And we're only going to be able to do one goo. And then this is going to be done. And it's adding mass to our vehicle. Notice that? We're up to uh, almost 1.9 kilograms of mass right now. Of stuff we've been sampling. I don't know exactly what exactly we're sampling, but sampling nonetheless, and it's still going to go for another oh, seven and a half minutes. Okay, let's do this. Deploy shoot. Cut shoot. Uh, I did it. Oh, I did do, I have to do it through staging. Stage? There it goes. <laughs> I thought I maybe messed that up completely. Okay, um, we gotta fly around for a little bit. Now you can't transmit back samples, um, because there's samples. You have to bring them back so they can be processed and turned into science. So this is my first time actually collecting a sample of any kind. So I'm not quite sure if I just get back and then I get the science, or if there's something else that goes on find out. Um, I'm wondering too, I would think if you have a laboratory, you know, if you had like a space station with a laboratory on it to get the sample to that, I would think that that's one thing the laboratory should be able to do. We'll find out. Alright, where are we at here? We have 30 seconds to go, after which of course it's back to the KSC finish off this first plane contract and this mission. Okay, damn. All right. Wobbling and stop anywhere for safety. So this should count. Whoa. Okay. Contract complete. Ye Hazard. And in addition, upon recovery, there was a pleasant surprise waiting for me at the KSC. Okay, so I did get the science for the goo. Earned, uh, yeah, I'm biting back. Jebediah. Jebediah advanced to level one. What do you. Oh! That's new. Okay, so something. I wonder if that contract pack change the experience because normally you need to get to orbit to get to level one I gotta check on that okay uh, let's actually go right in there now what is Jebediah getting experience for so Jebediah 
special experience from equals three. So pilot provide, yeah. I think Jebediah got some experience for that fulfilling a contract. Okay, that's interesting. That's changed something I didn't expect. All right, then what we're gonna do, let's build our a spider. The spider one. We'll talk finally about that KOS launch script. And I think that will nicely complete this episode. So, let's open up KOS. Let's copy over our Ascent program. Okay, and we will edit it and I'm going to talk about the changes that I have made. Again, talking a little bit about KOS. Oh, I realized something. I still have the same title here. It's ballistic script, but it's not a ballistic script. It is uh, for inclined orbits. Uh, I'll have to fix that. <laughs> it's an ascent script, not a ballistic script anymore. I just keep taking my old ones and I modify them. So this one, like I mentioned before, takes two parameters. One is for the inclination that you want and one is for a desired apoapsis. And all this program does is get to the apoapsis and then cut engines as I demonstrated before. Uh, it doesn't perform the circularization part. Something again for the future, we'll keep doing it. So uh, three functions being called here. Uh, we're going countdown, that's pretty much the same deal you've seen before. It has a new pitching maneuver. We have Meco, main engine cutoff. Uh, that's a new one in there. And then a, finally a lock to prograde at the end. Um, that's not too exciting, but let's take a look at my pitch calculation. Scroll that down. There we go. So this function here called my pitch. This was my old one, and then in the interim between last episode and this episode, I started considering why don't I build a new one? This one takes some expo. Maybe we'll start with explaining my old one here. So this is my old script. Uh, of course, as it's calculating what the pitch should be based on altitude, this is the program. Um, this, where I got this formula from, I just started thinking about, okay, I want my pitch to start at 90 degrees. And then by the time I'm up towards apoapsis, I want my pitch to be very close to zero degrees. So I need to think of a function that very quickly will knock it off a 90 and then kind of approach zero degrees kind of almost asymptotically, right? As, as you, you're kind of closing in on zero, your pitch adjustments towards the end are very, very, very small. And I initially, I started thinking about this immediately sh screamed out this this function here, the y is equal to one over x function. I, as a high school math teacher, this is a function I talk about with my students. In high school, I, I talk about it, I call it the reciprocal function. It's actually a rotated hyperbola. So it's really a hyperbolic function. You know, and in the conic vein of rocket flight, that seemed to sort of make sense. And then where the 900,000 and the 10,000 comes from is I just, you know, those are just stretches and shifts that you can do to the function. I just think about, you know, I fiddled, uh, not fiddled around, I figured it out, but you know, I wanted it to start at an altitude of zero, I wanted it to have a pitch of 90. At an altitude of 10 kilometers, I wanted it to have a pitch of 45 degrees. And so I just, calculated what the appropriate stretch and shifts would be in order to have our function go through that, or at least a set of appropriate st stretches and shifts for people that are going to be a little bit more precise. There are other process, there are other shifts that you could do to accomplish, get those same two points, but I digress, okay? Uh, but that's as I wrote here, this is my old one, and I commented it out. I wanted to keep it in case this one turned out to be a disaster, but this is my new one, which is obviously a little bit more complicated. It's got a divide by square root, altitude appears twice, there's a square involved there. Uh, where did this guy, uh, what's the evolution of where this came from? Well, I, you know, the other one I said, I just started thinking about what I want pitch to do, what would be a function to do that. That's all I thought about. Didn't think about actually anything in terms of, you know, orbital mechanics or anything like that. But then I started thinking about, well, what would be the shape 
of a typical ascent profile. I mean, could have looked this up. I personally find look, I'd rather just fiddle around and figure stuff out for myself rather than depend on what other people have figured out that are clearly much smarter than me so I'm sure that there are things that are wrong but I sat there and I thought about well if I think about a rocket's ascent profile starting you know pointing straight up and then arcing over until it's pointing horizontal um that screamed conics to me that screamed specifically actually kind of an elliptical path that's what i was thinking about an elliptical path starting with pointing straight up and then a nice curve and ellipse maybe even a circle being a special kind of ellipse really a circle to um uh, a pitch of zero once you get close to the apoapsis that you want so i thought ellipse ellipse sounds like a good shape for that path to be pitch is the slope of that ellipse. Well, how do you get slope? You take the derivative. So I took the derivative of an ellipse function that would have been translated a bit so that the center of the uh, whatever, but I ended up with a function that was sort of of this form. And then once again, I sat there with my, I didn't want, I don't want to get into derivatives, derivatives and stuff. You can look that stuff up if you don't understand what I'm talking about. But then I started thinking, but again, well, I need to stretch and shift this puppy so that again, I get my starting at 90 degrees and hitting a pitch of 45 degrees at an altitude of 10 kilometers. And that's where these extra numbers came in. And then I tested this on the Kerbal X that stock rocket that uh, just went into sandbox mode, tested it on the Serval X, seemed to work pretty good. I kind of liked it. So I'm not tested it on this rocket yet, so hopefully it'll work perfectly fine. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Let's go through the rest of this. That's sort of the meat of this thing. Uh, the second, actually there is a second sort of meaty piece to this, and that is, and I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about it, but calculating what your heading needs to be. I mean, the simple thing is just think about, I, I have a first, calculation here calculating something called rough heading and rough heading is simply 90 degrees minus your desired inclination if you do that so for instance if you want an inclination of 20 degrees and you take your 90 degrees which is of course due east subtract 20 degrees from that uh, you get 70 degrees and that's kind of roughly the heading you want to head off in to get an inclination of 20 degrees um, and, and if you want to leave it at that, that's fine. And that'll work for any point of direction, any inclination. I'm calling, by the way, going inclining towards the north, so a, a positive inclination. Going towards the south, I'm calling a negative inclination. And that'll work fine. Um, but I call that a rough heading because I want to get more precise for that because this does not take into account the fact that Kerbin is rotating. To take into account that Kerbin is rotating, well, I got to do some other calculations. Because Kerbin is rotating, we are already moving at about 175 meters per second in an eastward direction. So I got to do some vector arithmetic, do some calculating of some angles. I actually do do quite a bit of this in this video where I talk about the cost of launching into inclined orbits. And if you paid close attention to that and look at the vector diagrams that are in that video, and think about instead of calculating the magnitudes of the vectors, which are your delta v's, to think of instead the angles that you need in those triangles, um, and that gives you more about your headings. That's where all these formulas come from. I'm not going to talk about them much more than that, but what it ends up doing is calculating what I call a correction. So this is a correction angle to be added on to my rough uh, heading. Um, and so what I simply do after the, if the correction is calculated is I simply take my rough heading, I add on my correction, which is only gonna be a few degrees usually. Um, and that gives me a more precise heading that I should head off to in order to get the inclination that I want. Anyway, that's enough of what I'm gonna talk about. I think the rest of this is all the same. Countdown function is the same as you've seen before. Um, pitching maneuver, that's exactly the same you've seen before. The only thing that's different is this my heading and, and my pitch calculation, which I've just spent probably too long talking about. Uh, I do have here a function lock to program. That's pretty boring. And the uh, Miko function, main engine cutoff function, really simple. Once my apoapsis gets above the desired apoapsis that I want, times a thousand because I enter in kilometers, but I need to convert to meters, uh, we're just gonna cut throttle and print out Miko. That's it. Okay, so I think that's enough of that. We're going to take this. We're going to start our experiment.
we have a uh, min inclinations. Oh my gosh! What? Oh no. Okay, we might go for it. it. Says here to run this experiment, I need to have a minimum inclination of 70 degrees. You are a stinker. You are a stinker and a dinker. Okay, I did not know that. Okay, we can we can we can go for it. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna see what happens. I obviously didn't test for this, but we're gonna see what happens. So we're gonna run ascend. We're gonna go for an inclination of 75 degrees. I just need to enter it in there. We're going for an apoapsis of 80, and we're gonna hope for the best now that I realize that that is happening here. I am not impressed. Okay, run. Let's see what happens. And of course, a little bit of wobbling right there, always at the start. That is a pretty crappy one. I, uh, Hang on. Maybe because when it's on the pad, it's sitting on moving control surfaces? Could be. So it's starting its pitching maneuver. We're aiming for an inclination of 75 degrees, which is a little bit more than 70. You saw me in my previous testing how I was having trouble getting a polar orbit, so I am really, 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 really hoping that this won't be a problem. We'll find out very, very soon. Okay, smart parts just took care of staging those SRBs. They should be recovered. Okay, there we go, smart parts again. This stage will likely run out before I get to the apoapsis that I want. And I gotta be ready for staging, there is no smart part on this. Mm, wondering if I could use some more thrust from that space lane. Should see if I can jack it up a bit. Oh, at least it's charging up my battery, so that's good. Gotta get ready to the stage here. There we go, and now we're up to the little spider engine to take care of the rest, get this up to apoapsis, at which point this whole thing should uh, be done. And I'm hoping my inclination is okay. I do not have any Kerbal Engineer parts on this, again because of part count issues. Well, we'll see what happens. Delta V might be an issue. It all depends on how well I do at the top of this. Yeah, the problem is, is like, I do not have a ton of thrust, and right now you would like to have a bit of thrust. I am very much concerned for Delta V. I do not, I don't think I'm going to make, I'm not going to make it. Not going to make it. Crap. Okay, the program has ended. This thing is now temporarily going ballistic. There is our you know, even if we don't get an orbit, we should be collecting some of that once we're into space, which we are right now. There it goes. Uh, and I should be transmitting while this is going on. Where's my antenna? Because I am not convinced space is going to be an option. There's my apoapsis. I'm going to do this from map view, the circularization part. I didn't last time, last episode, because I knew there was some staging to do. This one, there won't be any staging to do. So I should be able to do a better job of keeping that apoapsis ahead of me. Let's start giving myself a little bit of thrust. I don't have thrust! This happened in simulation too. Why? Why do I not have thrust? This has got to be something wrong. I have lost... I'm pushing shift. Zed, I have no thrust. Well, did you spot the problem? <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, it is a subtle one. 
and I definitely did not figure this out before it was too late. Uh, it was only a little bit of Googling afterwards and a little bit of searching in the forums. It is a KOS issue, and it has to do with the very last function that was being called the Miko function, and specifically the line set throttle to zero. Apparently, the set command is still uh, persistent after the program is finished. So it set the throttle to zero, the program ended, but it's still stuck at zero. And the right thing for me to have done would have been to say lock throttle to zero. Apparently lock is not persistent after the program has completed. So that is what's happening. Uh, clearly, however, um, <laughs> this is not going to end well. I have no thrust, and I think I'm going to die. <laughs> Crap! Uh, we are transmitting space low over a couple of different biomes. We're now doing some re-entry stuff with the might. We are transmitting some things, so we are collecting some science. Clearly not much. Well! <laughs> this is uh, not exactly an auspicious mission. Not every mission is going to be a success. I guess it's a semi-tiny partial success in that I probably did transmit a tiny amount of science. Oh, but I do. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Oh, I do believe I might. My KOS probe core survived, and this stupid engine, the bane of my existence. <laughs> but anyway, I do thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.